and uh, I'm going to introduce our speaker, Mr. Michael Vax, Vice President of Engineering at Parthenopedia. Uh, Michael and I have known each other for quite a long time, right? And uh, Michael is a really good speaker for you to hear from today because Michael's particular uh, value add in the Agile space is the practical experience of having implemented Agile multiple times successfully. So in the time I've known him, he's gone through four different companies introducing and implementing Agile. Right? I don't know if you Four different companies, all in, all in Vancouver, um, product companies and professional services companies, so he's not single dimensional. right? Michael's also been involved with Agile Vancouver since uh, some time within the first year of its operation. This year he's the president and he's the mind behind uh, our Lean Startup Conference that ran earlier this year. And uh, our, uh, were you officially the, con yeah, you're the conference chair for this one? Yes, that's right. Okay, I guess. Right? And uh, with Eugene Nisko, who was the program chair who organized all the, all the speakers, right? So, uh, without any further ado, Mr. Mike Fox. Approach and kind of 
to agree a little bit narrow-minded vision that agile, uh, some agile uh, evangelists are kind of putting us there. And see, uh, also share with people kind of where I find it limited and what kind of workaround uh, work for me. And uh, it would be very interesting in case your experience and so we hopefully can go through it together. So please free to come up with questions and share your comments and your experiences anytime in this point. So, transformation is waterfall and uh, agile. So, um, I started doing agile when I was at a, at a company uh, at, uh, located at UBC. It's quite a big company with learning management systems. And we were waterfall. We were really, really seriously waterfall. Uh, we were releasing once a year. We had uh, separate product management, separate architects, separate development, uh, very long projects, uh, managing a uh, lot of documents written. And I started learning about Agile at this point. was not sure really, really how to start. But at some point, uh, kind of fate uh, intervened and our uh, management decided that uh, in the middle of this year-long project, Change, change direction. You could deliver absolutely different product on the same code tree, but uh, turn it in, uh, into different uh, functionality, different product. And I absolutely knew for sure there was no freaking way I could deliver it in the process <laughs> because I had like four months. So at that situation where you really have nothing to lose because you, if you continue with all the way, you lose anyway. So I said, okay, let's try to agile. So, and uh, we had distributed team, I had team in Boston, team in Vancouver, and it was quite an interesting experience. And what I also understood the main is that if you talk about the essence of this transition from waterfall to agile, it's going from large, from big things to small. And going from, everybody has a Microsoft project like that? <laughs> Uh, one of the skills actually I lost uh, when I transitioned to Agile was I was really expert in printing such schedules that you can actually put them on the wall. And sometimes if you need to go like that, yeah? It's not easy in Microsoft Project, so if you need hints, I can probably remember some. Uh, but it also kind of makes you look uh, very impressive. Man, you can't see that. You somewhere here. And... So this is a lot. This is a big. This is a waterfall, yeah? And in a job, you're something like that. And it's not comfortable, yeah? It's kind of, this kind of creates a certainty, creates some uh, uh, people see what you do, uh, even if it's wrong. Uh, even if it's far red. You're going something like that, yeah? Other things that you're going from big around, you have piles of little documents. You're writing big documents, it describes how feature is going to look like. It doesn't matter that it's never going to be implemented, but it's that, yeah? And then we go into these cards, how you can express yourself in these small things in the card. So, um, and uh, this company is where I start to build, we really have uh, uh, very uh, <coughs> productive and well organized product management group. They're producing a lot of documents, and I'll talk uh, later about uh, what kind of promise we had with that. But um, it's a transition from large to small. The same is with uh, architecture, yeah? We have a lot of the UML diagrams, uh, like uh, many types of them, and do, doing something with them, and everybody reviewing, and uh, before implementation starts. And then agile is for you. On uh, one of the companies I worked for, we had a, a, a wall that was covered with uh, whiteboards. And it was a piece of that project start, I tell them, okay, you can have a meter and a half on this board, your diagram, your architecture, so it's really big uh, head. So, and when that job started, just think about it, and, uh, uh, how difficult it is to tell people. You go from this large, big thing that's kind of very visible, very impressive, to the small thing. It's something that was used to face, yeah. And the main goal was to prove that small is going to work. And in order to do it, people started to simplify. 
in, if you open a kind of uh, agile introduction uh, uh, book, and uh, it's less so now because if you go to a bookstore, you can see a lot of kind of books on uh, uh, more advanced topic. But people who were writing agile books, their goal was to convince you that small is going to work. In order to do it, they simplify it a little. They simplify examples that you can. Uh, sometimes in agile books, especially in Scrum books, you see the uh, description of the project. And say, okay, let's develop some uh, 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 simple uh, like e-commerce site, and Mary is product owner, and Bill is developer, and John is tester, and they own the same room, they know what they do, they can, you can do it. Yeah. So, mostly Greenfield's project, customer is on the site, you have all the knowledge that you need for it. And it's not always the case. When I joined the e-commerce uh, uh, project, uh, the project, uh, the project was on version 6, huge amount of code. They just went through the release. They were delayed three, four months <laughs> because they couldn't release. And you're dealing with all of these problems that are in kind of some disconnect with this kind of simplification that Agile evangelists used to convince us to go Agile in real life. And the really, I think the community is working very hard to kind of close this gap. But we need to talk about it. We shouldn't uh, 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 pretend that this doesn't exist. And this is why I really wanted to talk about it. So agile is equal to iteration. Similarly, when you ask sometimes people what process they're using, sometimes I hear using iterations. But it means they're using agile, yeah? And they become kind of one on one, so iteration in a job. And iteration itself becomes really a focal point of this whole small message. So we do, we're doing iterations. Let's focus on iteration. Let's do enough requirements for this iteration. Let's do enough design for this iteration. And it works. <coughs> and actually gets a lot of benefits. But some questions that I uh, 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 started to uh, emerge in my mind, is it enough? Is it working? Else? What else should we do? What are we losing? So before I go any further, I really want to put disclaimer. I do love iterations. <laughs> I cannot think of doing any projects any other way. <coughs> and I don't know how many people are doing iterations. Most of you uh, think uh, the same way. And iteration really changed the way you think, so the way you uh, design the project, the way you uh, approach it. You stop thinking about okay, database layer, or you kind of start thinking of features and delivering them. And it's great, it works. It's very, very good. But is it enough? And what are we losing? So this is a question uh, uh, that you try to answer in this talk. I'll be very interested in your uh, uh, opinions on this. So let's get going. Um, so, to the degree, for me, sometimes iteration looks like horse blinded vision into this blind person and you can go. And it's good. There's a reason why they put uh, uh, blind on, uh, on the horse. The horse is not yet scared to those kind of uh, trucks that passing by. It really helps the horse to move. But, uh, and this is a focus kind of, uh, really was the, the main message of this go from big to small was all around iteration. And the question that I have after that is, are real life project fitting to this? Are they true? Is it simplification? And what are we missing if we focus on only one iteration? And I had uh, some discussion with people who were uh, interpreting Agile too literally and saying, okay, if you're not focused on iteration, you're not Agile. If you're trying to do, look ahead, look beyond it. It's not Agile. Everything's going to change, you should be doing it. And from my experience, actually, it's, you are Agile if you uh, do it. The question is how you do it. So I think we're missing big picture. And waterfall had big picture. Yeah. But, and I don't. Uh, and because our projects are complex, and we're getting more complex, complexity of the project doesn't go away. It's 
identified all these languages, all this investment into process, all this investment in tools, tasks that we need to automate, the business logic, the demands uh, 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 for uh, our work from business are becoming more and more complex. So I, I think that tools help us to kind of keep pace, but they don't eliminate this complexity. So any simplification of what we do um, doesn't help. It. Yeah, uh, we had uh, some discussion uh, here. I don't know if you, uh, some people heard about complexity theory. It's a new theory that uh, kind of uh, governs of complex system. And complex system is uh, uh, like stock market for us, like economy, sociology, how society behaves, how um, things happen in, uh, uh, in biology. And uh, many people apply the same theories to software. Too many things changing. We don't think we can control it. Yeah? So complexity, what we're dealing with, doesn't go away. And the agile helps to deal with it, but also should respect uh, the bigger things we need to have a uh, bigger uh, picture. When I started thinking about it, what was the problem with waterfalls having uh, and I came to the point that it's okay to have big picture. Problems with waterfall, they were trying to define every small detail in every this big picture. Mm -hmm. So instead of having vision and roadmap, they really were trying to define, okay, on uh, uh, five months from now, this developer is going to work on this task. And this doesn't work. So with that in mind, um, hopefully everybody, and this was they do love a job and do love but we'll go into uh, some things that where well, iterations are not enough. And let's talk about it. Does it make sense so far? Mm -hmm. Okay. So, there's iteration, and there will be the next part, and next after that. Yeah. So, what I want to talk about is what should we do before iteration? make it successful. Yeah. As well, what we need to talk about is what needs to be done after iteration. <coughs> Not everything fit can be fit in one direction. And how much attention you need to pay. So, and one of the, the biggest things that, uh, 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 problems that I'm finding uh, in the practicing agile, trying to uh, kind of have this big, bigger view, is that Actually, it's the same people who need to work on next iteration are very busy in this iteration. How do you split time? For it? How do you explain to people that this needs to be done even if they have these deadlines and they have these fires to fight? And this is a big, big challenge. Um, how many people are familiar with uh, Lean? I think so everybody who puts their arms out saying they're familiar with iter using iteration tools for the clean software development. A uh, woman who uh, uh, founded this movement in software development, a uh, very popular picture that she's on this conference, she wasn't presenting on clean uh, software development. But I, I really think that uh, Lean, uh, it's, a, it's, it's considered kind of one of the directions of uh, Agile, but its roots, I'll spend probably a couple minutes talking about this, because not everyone is familiar. Um, they look at, have you heard about Toyota manufacturing? So basically what Lean uh, Software Development did, they took this uh, uh, principle that worked for uh, in manufacturing for Toyota, so to help Toyota to become one of the world's leaders uh, in car manufacturing, and applied the same principles into software development. And Lean also, it's, uh, uh, if you want to talk to your management, Tell them that Agile is good. Don't look at Scrum books, look at Lean books. Because Lean talks about business value. It talks in a language that the executive can understand. And one thing is Lean is saying is people have a tendency to optimize their part. Optimize locally. One thing that Lean is saying, let's optimize it all. Because in reality, like you have an idea, which is your investment. 
Until this idea is materialized in a product that delivered to your customer, customer received no value. Doesn't matter that you uh, wrote uh, future requirements documents or did code design or uh, partially implement. Doesn't hit the customer, no value. You can sell it. So this idea of kind of optimizing the whole it is very important for uh, all software development. Doesn't matter if waterfall or agile. And uh, I'll give you examples when uh, it actually didn't work in waterfall. But then we need to look also how it may not work in agile. There's many other interesting uh, in principles are really uh, people who are not familiar with it. I think uh, Mary's, uh, one of Mary's book uh, is by uh, bookstore, very old uh, reading. It's not technical, it's really for people who want to understand how to manage the process and uh, how to do it. Anyway, um, so in the company where I, where I started doing this agile introduction, uh, as I mentioned, we had uh, Separate product management group, separate architecture group, and separate implementation group. So uh, we all reported to CTO. I was uh, uh, responsible for development, so um, the last what I do it, I was always saying the rest is just implementation, by the rest. And uh, this organizational structure also kind of uh, makes sure that each group was optimizing internally. And what we had, we had terrific product management. They were so ahead of everybody. They were well organized, writing documents, everything going through review and doing all of that, and very forward looking, sometimes five years forward looking. We had these great design documents that were written for features that haven't been implemented for five years and wasn't implemented before company was bought. So no, the implement, but tremendous amount of, uh, 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 amount of people spent it. And then we have architectural group. Brilliant guys. But architects usually are not good in project management. They didn't know how to manage themselves. And they needed to get all this requirement document and create design for all the documents. So throughput of this group was probably half of what product management was for producing. And one of the notion of lean is what product management is producing is all their great work, with all their great organizational skills, with, uh, are really uh, very smart people working. It was a waste. It didn't go even. It was a waste. It's like you had a spare part, you keep them, or you know, even worse, you have a food warehouse and you don't bring it to uh, to shop. It spoils. It spoils food. It doesn't. Go away. So in this case, was uh, requirements were bent like that. Design was like that, and development was somewhere in the middle. So the question is, could it happen with Agile? Is it possible that we uh, don't organize ourselves in a way that our flow is optimized? And in my experience, it actually happened quite often, and iteration one of the uh, reasons why it does. So let's talk about those requirements. Um, it's famous backlog. In every book you read, you find those backlog and uh, stories, and people can review and prioritize them, and so well organized, and product manager, pro uh, product owner is present, and knowledgeable, and can make decisions, and is in the room when people discuss it. And it's not always happening. I don't know how many people have product, uh, product owners? How many of them can? Answer all questions. I mean, when on a spot, when we're doing iteration play in 15 minutes. Also, sometimes the product owner role, I think this is something that uh, not uh, well defined, it's very different from uh, one company to another. In many cases, product managers. But product managers are usually people who work for marketing. And they on the road. Most of the time. The main responsibility is to talk to customers. And they may not have time to talk to government. So this is why in a number of companies uh, I introduced from the role of technical product management on the other side. I got this idea from a uh, software and other great company, very advanced in their job implementation. 
So, but what's usually happening is in a JavaScript, I actually succeed like that. <coughs> we are, everybody's so focused on iteration, what we are doing now. The people don't put enough effort <coughs> into preparing for next iteration, both on requirements and design. And we'll talk a bit later uh, what it means. But you can just look at this diagram, you see that your values that you deliver will be less. It's like pipe, you know, like pipe connected to pipe. And with a little bit water coming out of this pipe, you can't expect water for another end. So, if you think about this, and I found, the, found actually, uh, I, I was fighting with many, uh, with, uh, uh, we had quite a heated discussion with some people in, uh, uh, in my group that. We need to focus, we need to focus on iterations, what looks at, you're not agile, you're not focused, you're not thinking ahead. But then I, I, I found actually from uh, Mary Poppins' book, uh, uh, Great Help, I need, I need kind of some serious uh, uh, firepower behind me, <laughs> confirm what we're thinking. And he introduced this idea of ready, ready to be done, done. You know, uh, you know this done, done, triple done, yeah? Like uh, agile team saying, we are done, done our coding, done our testing, done our documentation, and it's called triple done. Um, but it should be ready, ready to be done, done. And this has really helped me to un understand what we're lacking and put it in the right track. Maybe you can express it in a much better way than I uh, can. And the quote from her about the uh, productivity, increased productivity that she found, uh, really uh, correlated with, with my experience. If you are not preparing, prepare for your backlog. If you're not investing in making your backlog uh, uh, ready for implementation, your velocity goes down. And I later talked about a number of smells you can recognize. It. But uh, this is kind of a uh, light bulb. Of, of, so, um, so then we start saying, OK, uh, we don't want uh, to go back to this uh, pile of documents because it's very easy to be on the other side and start again producing good waste. We definitely don't want to do that. So how do you find this balance? And one thing that uh, I learned uh, in my company was to so say, OK, not all features, not all user stories look the same. Not all of them require the same amount of effort in preparing them to be at this ready, ready state. So this is, uh, uh, again, classification that we use uh, Maybe uh, different uh, uh, in your organization. Okay, this fish is mine. And again, minor means different things in different environments, but once we have a definition that we use, okay, done it hundreds of times. Okay, we have, we have the screens, it does the functionality, now just a little bit different flavor of it, or the same functionality for, uh, to the same user. It's not a problem. Developers know how to do it. Uh, 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 code that can be looked at or penalty can be checked out um, and requirements are clear. Small, it's kind of maybe uh, enhancement to existing features, some minor UI changes, but no technical challenge, like really, again, it's, uh, uh, it can be done. There's no problem. If you go kind of the features that you're doing, that it goes across multiple uh, uh, modules and there's some level of technical uncertainties, uh, you probably need to treat it a little bit differently. And feature can be large. Feature can be really large. It may be a new uh, uh, product that you're starting or uh, brand new functionality and nobody has the experience of doing this before. Um, it may be different UI interface, not uh, what you had in your, uh, your existing project, or um, you may have complex domain crash. But you're looking at a kind of this kind of framework to make you, to help you to make the decision. You're looking at your system and saying, what is really chances that in half a year I will be asked to make this system up with that? And you have and you say, okay, Take maybe in half a year, people, people may ask me. I may have a big customer, my sales is planning to Google, they're planning to sell it, not to just small e commerce shops, but to some big uh, companies like Walmart. <coughs> and when is going to happen? 
And what is potential impact? And you say, hey, if it's a, 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 this how I'm implementing right now, and it will be just a couple of settings and everything will be fine, then don't bother. But if impact may be big, and probability of this happening is also quite high, you better spend time on it. Um, other very useful tool to do it is spikes. Everybody knows this term? No? Spike it basically is you have a question, and usually it's a technical question, design question, and you need to get an answer. And you can give uh, uh, assign one or two developers, again, depending on the sign, and you say, guys, you have two days. Go hack around. And your goal is not to bring back code, it's to bring back knowledge. So we should decide how to do uh, how you do it. So this is a required spike. So they don't need to write tests, they don't need to follow the process. The goal is to learn. And in most cases, developers are doing this by uh, coding, they're implementing some prototypes, so together. Yeah? So, uh, and first, you need to resist implement, uh, temptation to just, whatever they have done, put it into code. It's not, it's not what the goal to try to support the code. So, but I don't know, just for an uh, uh, example from, uh, uh, from, uh, from Party B right now, we need to select uh, uh, two that we can build into our product to do report, like nice smooth report. And I'm sure there's probably three or four uh, libraries that we can use. What I would do in this case, I would uh, uh, create a first spike to uh, uh, investigate what tools are there and uh, report uh, to the team back what we found. That would be the first iteration, yeah? In the next iteration, as we select the tool, I say, okay, let's go, guys, now before we really commit ourselves, let's try to implement it. Let's try to implement one, rep one report with this tool and see how it, how it works. We will all do it next iteration. Only in the third iteration, we really start developing reports using this tool. So sometimes you need to really sp uh, spread this spike from uh, <coughs> actual implementation. So, we talked about it, but it's kind of a summary. When you don't, when you haven't done enough planning, this is how you can see. People have difficult to estimate. Just too much unknown. Or your estimations are completely, you find out that your estimations were completely wrong. And I'm not talking about like from uh, uh, three points to five points, or from three to ten. That's, that's kind of wrong, yeah. Um, you may decide to, you, you start an iteration, you're working on a story, you do one technical pass, and you hit the wall. It may happen, doesn't matter what you do, but still, if you happen it too often, means you haven't invested in to preparing, answering this whole technical decision before implementation starts. Uh -huh. I don't know how many people have experienced abandoning stories in the middle of iteration. I have. Um, you also may have uh, developers as nothing to do. And sometimes you know about it, sometimes you don't. But uh, it also means that you have uh, done your work of uh, uh, feeding stories that are really, really important implementation. Okay, so we talked about what needs to be done before iteration, yeah? Now let's kind of talk about uh, things that are done after iteration. And by the way, it means that testing should be done in iteration. I firmly believe in, uh, believe in this. And uh, I always have QA sitting to get together with developers and doing as much as possible together. But still, I think there are some simplification happened in Agile talks about that. And uh, like simple scenario usually looks like that. So everybody using test and development from the very beginning. You create a test, it fails, you write some code, you pass, and you refactor, and this is what you read. Yeah. Well, most of the project haven't started with test and development. It's just a reality. But, is that? but then no. And many, many projects don't have enough automated tests, and you actually need to do a lot of investment into it. Uh, I did a number of companies and it helped, but right now, you may be in a project that doesn't. And you should ignore this fact. You should apply techniques that uh, uh, books recommend you if you're in different situations that describe in the book. Um, 
test strategy should go beyond uh, beyond preparation. You also may have been in environment where you do your own testing and you deliver to customers, customers do your own user accepts and testing. So you're not always kind of your iterations are aligned with what customer does. And uh, test strategy goes does go beyond iteration. You need to determine Look at your uh, uh, different components in your system and understand which part of these components are more valuable to your company and which are not. No. And nobody has 100% uh, of resources available if needed. You probably have less. Where do you put your effort? What's important to test automatically? What is not? What part of your system are changing all the time? Which are not? So it requires this bigger picture on, on testing. Um, yeah, we would love to have uh, a regression testing to be fully automated. And then we know. How many people have here? How many people can release without manual testing? I can. I would love to. Actually, I, I hope in, in a year I will be here and telling that I did it. Um, but it's, it's not really hard. So we need to, it means that, okay, our iteration going, 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 and we, uh, uh, I, uh, <coughs> we're doing a lot in our uh, iteration to eliminate bugs and find them the right way. Like, for example, let's say, tester are sitting together with QA. As soon as developer, uh, before developer starts implementing the story, if, uh, he or she needs to talk to tester to understand how they're going to test it. This is part of iteration. There's no point to develop something you don't know how to test. Yeah? When developer finishes the story, they sit down, this QA quickly goes through it, and uh, uh, without even reporting bugs, QA can find something quite, quite quickly and tell developer developers immediately things. So QA should be integrated into iteration. No doubt about it. But you still need to learn regression to something like that. And it goes beyond iteration. You need to know how to do it. Uh, performance testing. How many people are doing performance testing? Extremely important uh, uh, things. I implemented performance testing in a number of companies. I have actually a separate talk uh, about how to get performance testing in Agile. Uh, I think the video is available on Agile on your uh, site, so you can go there. But this kind of quick uh, run So there's a number of iterations, and you need to plan for performance testing. Performance testing is something that is usually more difficult to do requires more setup time, longer to run. It's not uh, as easy as uh, testing like uh, story. So one thing that you can do is, okay, if you begin with your project iteration uh, at zero, you setting up your environment. Think about setting up your, your performance environment at the same time. Understand performance environment. What's uh, your performance environment for performance processes that you're doing? Um, usually you need to prepare some data. And uh, performance testing requires more data <coughs> than regular testing, and the more data is for people to uh, manipulate. Good idea to run benchmark test, know your starting point. And then, you, probably uh, a couple of times of the, uh, out of the project, you may uh, measure uh, how to do it. Because any small change, people who deal with performance know that any small change, unintentional small change you know, done by any developers can uh, lead to dropping, to dropping performance half. And you probably want to know it ahead of time, yeah? Um, the other thing that we use quite successfully is focus test. And focus test is really when you develop some feature, and this feature may have performance implication. You need to design a test. And to, to see like uh, what the implementation is going to be, how it's going uh, to affect. So this is what we call a uh, focus test. And at the end, of course, you need to do a bunch of kind of uh, load tests, uh, uh, stress tests, capacity testing, and uh, things like that. Yeah. One of the things is kind of, uh, uh, how you fit iteration, like performance testing, is it iteration. One. Uh, uh, Limit, limiting factor of performance testing is you actually need to have working application before you can do it. <laughs> and uh, it was extremely challenging to do performance testing in uh, waterfall because usually you don't have working application <laughs> at the end. And then you discover all this uh, uh, performance problem, but guess what? It's too late to do something. Well, 
most of the performance testing are architectural in nature. And you're not changing your architecture, your development <laughs> people for uh, uh, release. So Agile helps. Agile really helps to do performance testing. But how do you do it? So let me walk you through it. So you are doing feature A. And you may have some different, uh, 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 some, uh, you're not sure from a particular feature is going to perform uh, well. So you may implement the formula spike, uh, uh, say, okay, guys, just modify this class, implement this feature, let's drop into performance testing environment, and then see how, how, how it's going, yeah? But feature A should be implemented, so in uh, next iteration, iteration N, you actually can now run focus test on, on feature A. So you do it in the next iteration when feature is ready and you can deploy it. In most cases, you cannot do it in the middle of, of iteration because it's not complete, it's buggy, it's not ready for, for performance stage. Okay? So is it, uh, it, it is useful to have a kind of this look, uh, you need to plan performance more, but uh, it's kind of, you need to have this shift can be done in this iteration. The features that you're developing in this iteration can only be tested when it's completed. So it should be the next iteration. Um, so some of the best practices for performance testing, again, you will find uh, more in my presentation on agile performance testing. Uh, performance tasks are tasks. It needs to be done. And sometimes, again, it needs to be done by the same technical people who are busy doing work for this iteration. So again, you need to find the balance. And unfortunately, some people are delaying performance uh, uh, work to the end, when at the end, uh, nothing. Try to throw more hardware into it, but make it help. Um, because performance testing is kind of is more difficult to do, and it requires more calendar time. When I started uh, just putting performance lab together in one uh, uh, company, uh, it was taking us a week to run one test. Just setting it up and everything, run one successor was big. The goal was to improve it, it took us a couple of years, we were able to do it in three, four hours, with a lot of automation. It's still a big thing to do. So, if there are some functional bug that stops performance testing from being executed, make it higher priority, and block it. Uh, yeah, yeah. Other interesting point about iteration. When Agile started, Agile introduced a lot of kind of new terminology and uh, slang. Uh, talk about Scrum, iteration, story points, uh, velocity. And assumption was that we actually can make business to adopt our terminology. And not only adopt our terminology, but they will see uh, these MBAs, they will see the wrong ways, and they start thinking as us, geeks. And it's not very successful. <laughs> so, business does not plan an iteration. That's a fact. When was the last time you heard CEO is saying, our financial results for iteration 24 were, we don't think this way. Business thinks in quarters, because it's how accounting is done. Financial years, yeah, they worry about when there's next conference, or next show they need to present, or next delivery to customers. This is how they think. They think in customers and money. And we talk iterations and points. So we need somehow bridge this gap and don't assume that uh, we are kind of isolated. Now we speak about, uh, talk about iteration and we uh, have a freedom of uh, changing the courses or, or uh, okay, we don't know how to for this to figure out the next iteration. It doesn't work with business. How many of you were asked to provide estimations and commit to this estimation without having a clue what you're going to develop? <laughs> I just did it yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> and what do we do? 
зазрели. Not enough helping many leaders I can find. Yeah, we know how to estimate that work, we know how to estimate the duration, but business needs commitment. And I understand, like I, I'm, 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 I've been an executive uh, for probably the last uh, 10 years. And I fully understand why CEO needs this commitment. He does. Because on the level he's talking, this is how, uh, what is expected from him. So, so how we do business level estimations in our job? Um, different people doing different things. I uh, really would be interested to uh, hear from, uh, uh, from you guys. Um, many people just do it based on gut. Sometimes it's good. Um, some people uh, have, you know, are lucky to have some kind of uh, senior technical guru who was in the company for the uh, last 10 years and kind of have experience doing all of this. And he's always one guy who estimates and is kind of more or less worth it because of experience. Many people are not, yeah. A um, couple of techniques I will want to share with you that kind of help me and I'm interested to hear what work for you. Um, again, sometimes spike is a good thing to do. If you have, if you don't need to provide uh, estimation on the spot, first of all, even if you think that you know, uh, but if you, there's opportunity for you to say, okay, I'll tell you tomorrow, I'll tell you next week, use this opportunity. So this guy's the first. Uh, uh, then if you can uh, uh, ask uh, somebody to go and implement Spike and help you figure it out, now that we are very good thing, at least you get some uh, technical information. Very simple things that I found, <coughs> very useful. Less you know, use bigger units. I, no, no, I, 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 I uh, uh, seeing people who are asking difficult questions, what I can deliver in three months, and they're absolutely new, they don't know, they don't know how many people they're going to have, they don't know uh, uh, some complexity, and they start in, uh, estimating in hours. Because people ask, and usually you do estimation, kind of, in a small way. But in a situation like that, always go to months. If people don't buy months from me, go to development weeks. <laughs> Get this estimation. 
Also, some you can get more information uh, from it. Uh, the other uh, two, and I'm afraid to pronounce when I say it, uh, names is two on uh, Agile conference, is Microsoft Project. What Microsoft Project is really good at, not on this kind of uh, 10,000 line schedule, but if you look at Microsoft Project, already has a date on the top. Yeah? And you can put uh, these bars, you can connect them together. If you put like, like uh, make them big, just for modern modeling tool, and you can move them around, you can, and you can like, depend on the sound, you just yeah, like a good picture. And you can throw it away. Just use Microsoft Project as a modeling tool. Of your modeling of your work, modeling of your iteration, when things are going to go instead of the work. Um, it's uh, getting to the uh, uh, end, and I uh, want to just <coughs> make the last point that uh, we don't operate in the world garden. Any software company uh, nowadays has multiple customers, multiple departments, multiple uh, partners. They all have dependency. So if you think that we can play, uh, uh, plan our iterations uh, independently of what we do when, uh, in many cases, we have many constraints. And when you're planning, especially when you're planning like not in boundaries of iteration, but stepping out of the boundaries, you take into account, like one thing, for example, I, I dealt recently, uh, you have multiple customers, different features, developing a different branch, you need to merge them. When you're merging them, you need to take into account when uh, uh, code goes to customer, customer goes to user acceptance test, where is acceptable risk to do it, a lot of different things. If your uh, team is big, if your project is big, it takes it in, into account. Yeah, it has uh, many, many, many other external dependencies that affects your planning. And in some, if you're reading, again, introduction to uh, Agile books, assumptions are nobody talks about. But you, you need to take into account because you need to so, then, so how do we find the balance? Where do we spend our time? The current iteration, looking ahead. And the best advice I can uh, 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 give is you need to maintain long term vision. Just don't try to determine every detail. Details are going to change, your vision may change. But the fact that you thought about it will help you. You have to make sure that your implementation is successful, your team is productive. Yeah, yeah that's what they Sorry, Michael, please repeat the question. Okay. Thanks. Uh, the question was, uh, what to do with usability testing? And when usability uh, testing uh, It really depends what you're doing and how easy uh, to change those uh, different kinds of tools, sorts, depending on uh, uh, where you are and how critical usability is to you. Uh, I start with a more kind of uh, uh, modern, aggressive approach <laughs> to it, or risky approach to it. Uh, with software as a service, uh, have you guys heard about A-B split testing? Uh, it's a, a, a very popular term in website and commerce when they, sometimes in your usability, uh, uh, you create two variants of your site, two variants of your page, and you see which one is working better by uh, uh, directing traffic, collecting statistics, like Google has tools for this and so on. So people who are running software as a service, and it's not kind of business side, it's more kind of consumer side, where you can experiment it. You can probably do it actually, uh, release it, then try something new and just use feature flipping to allow a small portion of your user base to see one variant and another, and then you have some goals, for example, a uh, uh, conversion rate, like who you press this buy button, and uh, uh, use this. But in a more traditional environment where uh, you do need to have usability design, this usability flow, you have mock-ups, and I would uh, say to do it uh, ahead of the 
because it's a, again, this is something that you're giving your developers to implement, and your UI needs to be at least your conceptually, you need to know what you're doing. At the same time, it's quite possible that uh, you don't know which one is going to work, so you may need to implement something, demo it, get feedback, but then uh, uh, plan that you're going to correct it. It's not only a question of how long it's going to take. It's 
how many people we can put, and then we can start working on it. And if you're just talking about like duration versus calendar, so always think in calendar time. I think we as a, a, a profession don't uh, appreciate enough how valuable calendar time is versus many months, uh, many weeks. Sometimes we just need to have time to think or to figure things out, to, to, to get right people in the room. Or, uh, uh, and this is calendar time. No, like uh, nine women cannot deliver baby in one month. This is the same, the same, this month. Even if we have all resources in the world, if I have the best developers, and I'm sure that this uh, uh, conference uh, is full of great developers, I cannot deliver uh, 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 a brand new product in a week with them. So sometimes it's not a question of resources, it's really of uh, time. And maybe your mind also very focused on the current project. Nobody in the organization has the bandwidth to even think about new product. Calendar times, probably not the same. Use, use this in your conversation. Okay. Uh, thanks. Thank you.